We're going to finish out section 7.1 in this video involving applications for the area between two curves. Um, before we get into that, I do want to just remind you that in the next video we're going to take what we learned in section 7.1 and we're going to make things a little bit more complicated because we're going to be looking at volume instead of area, which means we're dealing in three dimensions instead of two. So if you have any doubts about your understanding of section 7.1, I would do as much practice as you can before you move on to section 7.2. So previously we studied position, velocity, and acceleration. That was in calculus one. And if we took the derivative of the position function, we found the rate of change of position, which is velocity. And if you take the derivative of velocity, you get the rate of change of velocity, which is acceleration. So now, because we're dealing with applications of integration, if I integrate the acceleration function, I get the sum of the change of velocity over a period of time. And if I integrate the velocity function, which is what we're going to do in our next example, I'm going to get the accumulated or sum of change of position over a period of time. Well, if I add up the changes of position over time, I'm getting the distance traveled. So let's take a look at an example. So for this example, we have the velocity of a ball being modeled by the function v of x is equal to negative x squared plus 3x. And we want to find the distance traveled after four seconds. So going to what we've been doing, and I didn't graph this one ahead of time, but what we're saying is we want to find the distance traveled after four seconds of this function. Now, if I were to graph this function, it's going to look something like that. That's a horrible depiction, but you get the idea. This is going to be a parabola that is upside down. And if I plug in the value of three, I get zero because negative three squared is negative nine plus three squared is positive nine. And that gives me zero. So even though it says after four seconds, I know that really I'm just looking for what is the total accumulation of distance traveled. So I'm trying to find the area of this function. So that's all we're going to do. And the good news is we already know how to do that. This is going to be the integral from zero to four. So even though I already know by graphing it that it ends at three seconds, I'm going to continue to four. And I'm going to take negative x squared plus 3x, the integral with respect to x. So this one's fairly easy. I didn't have to subtract anything because keep in mind what we've been doing is we've been taking the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x. So you might be saying, well, why didn't I have to do that here? Well, keep in mind that this is g of x down here, and g of x is just zero. So we're subtracting zero. So now all I'm going to do is integrate. This gives me negative x cubed over three. This gives me three x squared over two. I'm integrating from zero to four. And then again, I'm just plugging in the four. So this is negative 64 thirds plus 48 over two minus zero plus zero. And I don't need those brackets anymore. And when I solve that, I find two and two thirds meters. So that is the total distance the ball has moved from zero seconds when time began to four seconds. For this question, we're going to change things up just a little bit. We're saying that the rainwater is accumulating in a tube at a rate of negative one half x squared plus two x plus one cubic centimeters per hour. And I want to find the accumulation function and how much water is in the tube at the end of one, two, and three hours. So the reason this one's a little bit different is because I have to find one, two, and three hours, I would have to integrate from zero to one, from zero to two, and from zero to three. And instead of doing that, I can just write a general equation, which is the accumulation function that they're asking for. So in order to do that, I'm going to follow the same process, but I'm just going to put T, 
as my upper limit of integration and that's going to give me a function with respect to t so that then I can just substitute in the value of t. So I'm going to integrate negative one half x squared plus two x plus one dx and when I integrate I get negative x cubed over six plus x squared plus x with my limits of integration from zero to t. Plugging in t, I get negative t cubed over six plus t squared plus t, and then minus zero plus zero plus zero, which I'm not going to write. So this is my accumulation function. So why is that helpful? Because now all I have to do is plug in one, plug in two, and plug in three, to find the solution for each of those values of time. So if I plug in one, I get negative one cubed over six, so negative one sixth, plus one squared, which is one, plus one, which gives me one and five sixths cubic centimeters. If I plug in two, I get negative eight over six, plus two squared, which is four, plus two, which gives me four and two thirds cubic centimeters. And if I plug in three, I get negative 27 sixths plus nine plus three. And combining that gives me seven and one half cubic centimeters. Coming up next, we're going to find the volume of a solid using the disk method. So again, I just want to reiterate that we're going to use all of the same strategies that we learned in section 7.1. So make sure that you're comfortable with this material before you move on to section 7.2.